If you've ever felt confused about the nightmare routing on a Magis Pro Mixer, you are not alone. In this video, we'll uncover seven super useful features so hidden that they might as well be secrets. From setting side chains and inserts to simply getting the headphone output to work, we'll take a deep dive into the esoteric world of Midas Pro Mixers. I've mixed loads of shows on Midas Pro Mixers, so I'm here to guide you through getting all of these things set up. Consider this your backstage pass to the world of Midas Pro Mixing. So grab your headphones and let's uncover the seven Midas Pro secrets. So first up, let's do the auto mixer, which is super useful if you have have multiple talking heads on stage. It also teaches us how to use the insert points on the Midas Pro. So we need to get to our effects rack and then we need to find an available effects slot, click on change devices and then pick the Midas auto mixer. Now that it's set up, we need to get our channels into the auto mixer. So we head to our patch screen and on the left hand side, what we want to do is head to channel insert sends. And then on the right hand side, we want to pick our effects units. Because what we're going to do is we're going to pick the channels that we want to use want to send to our auto mixer and we're going to use the insert sense, select the channels here and then send them into the inputs of the auto mixer. You'll see I have it here on effects unit 5. Now that our channels are sent to our auto mixer, we need to return the auto mixed signal on one of our channels. This is a bit different from other auto mixers. What we need to do is pick effects on the left hand side of the patching page and on the right hand side I'm going to go to inputs. I'm going to find my auxiliary inputs here and use one of my auxiliary inputs to return the auto mixer signal. So what's happening now is the insert send is coming from our input channel going into the auto mixer. All of the signals are being auto mixed and balanced and then you get a sort of master signal sent out and returned on the effects return. All that's left to do is head to our input channels and then make sure that we take them out of the main left right, the main master. Otherwise, we're going to have a doubler, two versions of the same signal being sent to the master. Of course, auto mixer isn't the answer to all your feedback woes. You might need better EQ. So check out my free guide, Three Steps to Perfect EQ. The link is in the description below this video. So for part two, we're going to set up a DSR, also really good for talking heads and sometimes even for bands. We'll set it up in the exact same way, get an available effects slot, click change device, pick DSR under dynamics and then head back to the insert sense page. Much the same as the auto mixer, select the channels you want to DS and then send them to the effects page on the right hand side and then into the DSR. This is where it changes, right? Because to return the signals this time, we're going to use our insert return points. We want to have the effects tab open on the left and then on the right, we want to have our insert returns. We're going to choose the output of our DSR and we are going to send that to the insert return points on the same channel that we sent originally into the DSR. All that's left to do now is engage the insert point. So if you go back to one of those channels that you patched into the DSR and you look now on the overview section, there's a little button here that says insert and you can click that and it will turn blue to show that it's on. If you open up that tab there, you'll see that it shows you that it's being patched in and out of the DSR. Now you can head back to the effects unit itself to control how much you want to engage the DSR. Another kind of brutally underused section of this desk is the talkback section that you see on the top right here. And we can actually use this to route a microphone signal anywhere in this mixer, both internally onto channels and buses, and also externally out of any outputs on the mixer or connected devices. We just connect a microphone into the microphone input, and what you'll see here is a gain control, which functions just like any other microphone preamplifier. We turn that up to gain up our channel, and below that you will see a level dial, and that is much like a fader. It turns the level up, which is being sent to our channels that have talkback enabled. We've got a button here in this main section which says talk, and that is the sort of master unmute button for the talkback section. What we need to do is route this talkback section into a channel, whether that is an input channel or a bus or an output. So we pick a channel, let's say a monitor channel that we want to test, and on the top left here, you will see the talk section. You just press this green button to engage talkback, so now the master is on and the channel is on, and you can use the level dial to turn up this microphone in that channel. So you see here, I can talk into the microphone and send it into my monitor channel, which would then come out of the monitors I have patched to it. But it's not just monitor channels. We can also send it to input channels if we want to check that they're getting signal, compressors are working, or they're routing properly to outputs. We could even send it to our master bus to make sure that our master outputs are connected properly to the speakers, to the left and to the right. The great thing about this is that you can also engage pink noise and use that to test a system or test speakers that you have on the stage. To control the pink noise generator, the oscillator, you just need to use the oscillator button, click on the screen here and go to the monitor section and you'll see that you can control the oscillator level and the 
type of noise it's generating. Another really useful feature on Midas Pro mixers, which is available in a lot of mixers, is the direct out section. This allows you to take a copy of whatever signal is going into an input channel and just send it out of any output channel that you have. It also has the ability to control the level of that output and you have a mute button for it. So to enable this, you open up your patching screen and then you make sure that you have direct outs available on the left-hand side of the page. And then on the right-hand side, you want to select your IO, your outputs. You can then patch whatever channel you like. You can patch the direct output of that into a specific output. Let's see output one on the back of the mixer. Head back to your channel and then up the top, you can click the button to unmute the direct output and use the dial to turn up the volume. Now you're sending a copy of that channel's input signal straight out of another output on the mixer. Great if you want to make a recording of one channel or something similar like that. Now we're onto the worst feature of the Midas Pro series and that is the headphone section because when you turn the mixer on and you reset the mixer or whatever, you need to patch the headphone output to the headphone socket. By default, no sound comes out of the headphone socket which is infuriating. It's really easy to fix, thankfully. So all we need to do is go to the patch screen and on the left-hand side, we need to make sure that we're on our monitor section. On the right-hand side, we need to make sure we have our IO section open. The first two here you'll see are monitor bus A, left and right. And so we just select them. And on the right-hand side, on the sort of bottom right-hand side, you will see the monitor section of the IO section. The first two outputs down the bottom here are simply headphone out A and B or headphone out left and right. So we patch monitor section A to the headphone output and hey presto, now when you solo something and it's sent to the monitor bus A, you'll be able to hear that on your headphones. Now we're getting to the really juicy stuff. Let's do side chaining. Side chaining allows you to control the dynamic section on one channel based on the actions of another channel. All we need to do to enable this is head to the patching screen as always and make sure that we have our inputs on the left hand side and our side chains on the right hand side. You will see there is a chain icon and also a key icon. The top one is side chain that applies to the compressor on the destination channel and the bottom one is key input and that applies to the gate on the destination channel. So we pick an input channel on the left and we can patch that into the sidechain input of a channel on the right. For example, we might have music playing from an iPad or a DJ, but whenever the host speaks, we want to dip that music out. We want to compress it. So we would take the host's microphone from the left-hand side and patch it into the sidechain input of the DJ channels on the right. All that we need to do now is go back to the DJ channel and make sure that on the compressor section, the sidechain button is activated. And now the compressor is listening to what's happening on the host's microphone instead of what's happening on the DJ channel. It will only compress when it hears the host mic speaking. Just turn that threshold right down, turn that ratio up. And whenever that host speaks, that music is gonna go right down automatically. You might also want to do this with a snare over and under mic in the gate section. If you use your snare top mic to sidechain the gate on your snare under mic, then you can be sure that that under the snare mic is only going to open when the top of the snare mic is hit. And it lets you control the dynamics of that a little better as well. Last but not least is channel safes. These let you change scenes without recalling certain parameters. If you just head to the automation and filing page and then up the top, you will see recall safes. Open up this page and you will see every single channel on your mixer. And you can click to set either individual parameters or whole channels to be safe from recall. As an example, if you had a host mic and the DJ that we were talking about, you don't want the volumes of them to change when you change scenes between bands or acts or whatever is happening. You want to always have them at your fingertips and unaffected by the automation on the console. So you would just click to enable the scene safe, the recall safe for both of those whole channels. And now when you change scenes between band one and band two or whatever it might be, act one, act two, you'll know that these channels will not move up, down, change gain or mute. And that way your host can continue to speak while you change all the mixer settings to get ready for the next band. If you need more info about Midas mixers, I have a video here on getting everything set up to go on a show. And I'll leave some other videos around here that you might find helpful. Consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if this was helpful. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.